Great. Well, good afternoon, everybody. So I'm speaking from Poynton in Cheshire, where the weather is absolutely beautiful. I hope that the, the images uh, on my on my uh, folding table come across. As she just wants to show what she's done here, I'm going to move over to the other camera. If you just give me a second, here she is, and she's going to show you what she's just done on the previous session. Whoa! Look at those. Brilliant. So thank you very much, Lee, for excellent oh. model. Whole oh, family, Asia. That's amazing. What size paper is the uh, is the baby one from? So fifteen, seven and a half, five. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> She's just a masochist. Super yeah. cute. Thank you, Asia. So I'm going back now to this. So this I seem to be zoomed in rather a lot. So I'm going to zoom out a bit. Okay. Thank you, my darling. So this was. Uh, uh, Lee's session was quite a complicated one, so I'm going to give you a bit of breathing space by teaching possibly one or possibly two or possibly even three models. We'll see how we go, but the, the, the advantage here is that all of these uh, designs, all of these, the folding is very straightforward. I hope it is anyway. So I've got two sheets of paper here, which is standard 15 centimeter origami paper. What I should have said in the preparatory um, uh, notes is to, that would, if you are able to get a sheet of common or garden A4, uh, this is standard white printer paper, white on both sides. This will be useful for a subsequent model. Now, if uh, any of our American friends are with us, unfortunately, your standard letter paper won't work. It has to be A4. So. If you've not get A4, I'm sorry, it, it won't work. Uh, so uh, that's just for preparation for the second model that I hope to teach. So I'm just putting that to, to one side. and I'm going back to my two uh, 15 centimeter squares. So I'm going to show you something which is, uh, just a minute, let me take this silly peeping thing away. Uh, just a moment. Right, so... Um, yeah, this is related to this thing here, which is been rather overexposed. So this is something which I call the chain link cube, which I've shown at a number of Zoom sessions recently. And uh, I, um, maybe if this time I can show it afterwards, but I think it's a bit overexposed and maybe a lot of you have already folded it. I, I demonstrated at the origami marathon, but this is a close sister or nephew what I'm going to show now is a close sister of this of this chain link cube. So we're actually we actually need two sheets of paper, and I'm going to start by folding. I'm going to start by folding from the white side, and I'm going to fold them both in half, like this. Simple alley fold, and I'm going to do the other one as well from the white side. I'm going to fold. In half like that. I hope that's all clear to everybody. Pretty straightforward so far. What a relief after all that performance with Mr. Um, with Lee. This is this should be a lot easier. So you can relax a bit. Now the next thing we need to do is to fold down this raw edge down to meet the folded edge that you've just made and make a, another crease like that. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this one here. I didn't want to teach the chain link cube again because I'm rather bored of it. But it's, it's a nice model and this is, a, as I said, close relation. So I now need my cutting tool which is either one of those or one of those. This one has, it says British Origami Society on it. Now, this is quite a useful little gadget, but they're notoriously unreliable. So I'm actually going to resort to the primitive version, the Mark I cutting tool, which is a good old fashioned table knife, which has a non-serrated edge. And this works every time. The famous envelope opener, has a, a checkered history with me. They don't always work. So I'm going to resort to my Mark I cutting tool. And I'm actually going to cut along this, this last folded edge that we made here. 
I'm just going to go all the way along like that. And I'm going to put that remaining bit on one side, which we're going to, we might need that later, depending on how things go. So there's one, and I'm going to do exactly the same with the other. If you want to use your envelope knife, you haven't got a, a table knife with a non serrated edge, well, that is just fine. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to put it by, by one side. So I've, we've got actually two four by one rectangles which are white and coloured on either side. So I'm just going to, I don't need that anymore for the time being. I'm putting that out of the way. Ash has just provided me, actually, I should point this to you. Based on Michael LaFosse's great class, which I thoroughly enjoyed, she's lent me one of her knitting needles to show think where things are. So I'm keeping that beside me for a, a later stage. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one. The, the folding is exactly the same on both pieces. What I'm going to do is fold it in half, but I'm not going to crease all the way. I'm going to fold it in half like this, very softly, and I'm just going to make a tiny mark in the centre of each of these creases. It's only a tiny mark so that we, look, we can locate the centre point. Okay? So having done that, I'm going to look at... I'm going to use my knitting needle now. I'm excited. So there is the centre point that I put in on one, and there is on the other. Okay, so I'm now going to fold, put away my knitting needle, because it rolls on the floor and I can't find it. So I'm going to move the this lower edge, and I'm going to make it touch this, this centre point. Take your time. This is a geometric model. I should say that this, this, this is a two-unit model. All the the designs that I'm planning to teach today are two unit modules, two unit uh, designs. And it's all very well, this unit uh, origami, but it does get a bit painful when you have to fold 30 units or 60 units or however many you need. Now these are, are beauties because it only needs two. So what a pleasure. I'm all for keeping things simple. So that's I've done with one. I've simply taken the two short raw edges to the center pinch mark. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Having a bit of difficulty seeing my pinch actually, so I'm just going to reinforce it a tiny bit. So here we are. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So far so good. Any problems anybody? Please put in your Q&A. If you're having if you're struggling so on we go I'm now going to repeat the process that we've just done by taking this short folded edge up to the center uh, crease line well, it's not a crease line anymore it's two other folded edges uh, sorry raw edges in the center on either side Okay, so for those of you who, are, who were at the marathon, you can see it's got a lot of common ground with the chain link cube that I made uh, at the marathon. Um, maybe you can uh, remember that. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here, folding in these two edges to the centre crease line. I think that's clear. Same thing over here. Pretty straightforward. What a relief. I know that, you know, that, that Lee business of twisting and cutting and, and, and folding and all this business. Oh, this is straightforward stuff. So we've got two little um, square packets. And I'm now going to unfold the lot. I'm just going to make it a fraction darker because it's... And that's the wrong way. Make it a bit darker so that you can probably see the creases a bit more straightforwardly. So if I open both of these up, you can see I've got this curious U shape. And what I'm going to do now is fold um, in half with the long side to the long side. So I'm going to fold in half along the length of each of these units. 
and I'm going to coincide these edges exactly so that there is no white paper showing whatsoever he said confidently and failed okay but that's the general idea and I'm going to do the same thing with that one this one over here folding over like this to cover up all the white paper okay now I'm going to arrange both of these units so that the folded edge is furthest away from me and that the two the double raw edge with the white paper that's visible between them is pointing towards me here okay so if you can arrange your papers like that now what I'd like to do now is I'm going to get me me uh, La Fosse folding uh, uh, a knitting needle now then I'd like you to look at this one two three this third square from the right one two three and I'm going to I'd like you to imagine with all the force in your power a diagonal which goes from the top left of that square to the bottom right so the diagonal like that this is the folded edge at the top this is the double raw edge at the bottom it's very important that you get the orientation right and having imagined it I would actually like you to make a, a valley fold and it might be useful if you just pinched in the interior edge of that third square just to make reinforce it firmly so that you can make this fold accurately so I'm going to take the upper folded edge down at 45 degrees and I'm going to make it a lie alongside that vertical mountain fold that we just pinched in so that's what we've achieved and we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side I'm going to just reinforce that one two three third square the interior uh, edge of that third square I'm going to reinforce it with a mountain fold just so that it's really clear and I know exactly where I'm going to fold same principle I'm going to make a diagonal which this time it goes from top right to bottom left so it's a mirror image of the one that we've done there so I'm going to fold that over like that and we've got a thing that looks a bit like a, a bridge or an archway or something it doesn't lie particularly flat mine which means I haven't done it very well but that's the general principle you see I've got lots of kinks and things having done that I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other so if you didn't quite understand the first time round no problem because we're going to do the same thing on here so let's count in again one two three squares from either end and we want a diagonal which goes from the in on the on the right hand side of the strip we need a mountain sorry a valley fold or a diagonal which goes from the upper corner of this square upper left corner to the bottom right so that means I'm just going to reinforce that crease so I know exactly where I'm folding to and I'm folding this folded edge down to the interior edge of that third square there's one and I'm going to do exactly the same thing mirror image on this side in other words the crease is going to go between those two corners there and it's a valley fold so I'm going to just pinch that in with thumb and forefinger in order to just locate it precisely okay take your time because it's important that this is clean and crisp and that the, the creases are sharp because it's a geometric model okay so having done that we need to unfold both of these strips back to the horizontal shape like that and we're going to make these diagonal folds into reverse folds rather than being a valley fold 
it's going to be a inside reverse fold. So it's like this. And it means I'm going to have to change this upper uh, mountain fold into a valley as I reverse fold the paper between the layers. Pretty straightforward. And you can see that the bit that's projecting downwards is now turned white by magic. Okay, and then we do the same thing on the other side. Be precise, please. I'm folding it in half first, then I'm going to fold it like that. Okay, so there's one done. And once again, I've got this bridge shape. And I'm going to repeat the whole performance on the other side too. Hope everybody's following this. Deafening silence, I assume that everybody's right up to it. Vertically. We're getting comments on knitting needles, Dave. Oh, really? but not on not on <laughs> not on not on your folding. The knitting needle's the star of the show, really. The knitting look at this because look, there's, there's She's given me hundreds to choose from. I'm absolutely totally confused and I don't know which one to use. So i I chose one and put all the others out of the way. So there we have our little curious archway things, or our bridges. Now what I'm going to do now is open up one side of this reverse fold so that this corner knitting needle pointer, this corner here is going to fold over to touch the lower edge and that's really the centre of this central section here and I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now with any luck these two raw edges will touch one another exactly and i'm going to do a bit of ironing absolutely right lee three what is it three three point ironing maximum heat and maximum steam is what's on on my my iron okay then i'm going to turn over and i'm going to just rotate all this section over the other way so i'm really reinforcing this crease in both directions it's a bit like the traditional house that you probably made in your first steps in origami. So we've, we've got this curious sort of flattened house shape and we're going to repeat the whole performance on this piece here. So I'm taking over, I'm dividing these two reverse folds into two. I'm swinging them back and forth so that they stand at 90 degrees at right angles to the central section. I'm opening it up. And it's useful if you swing this over left and right. So I've got two units which look something like that. How does that look to you? How does how is everybody getting on? More or less so far so good? Pretty straight. Oh, shall we ask if everyone's up yeah, to I up think, to speed? I think so, and I'll have a drink of water while I'm at it. While, you, while you're having a drink and people are voting, Louise has pointed out that a double-ended needle is a cable needle and knitting needles only have one point. So let's make sure we correctly name our, our, pointy, our pointy things. Wow, I'm, I'm impressed by all this knitting knowledge. We never knew what we would learn in your class, Dave. No, and and what we- I just to point out uh, emphatically that this is the British Origami Society, not the British <laughs> <laughs> they have conference in a moment as well. They do. Unconver unconventional, they call it. Okay. So I'm ready to carry on. It looks yeah. like everybody. Else. Wow. 99% of people, people are ready. Who is this 1%? I cannot believe it. Right. So I'm going to carry on. It's tough if, you've, if you're behind. Now, with one of these, only one, I'm actually going to release those two creases that all those that sort of double y shape and i'm going to make it look like this i'm going to change some of these creases so that it looks like a sort of a t shape i'm sure you can follow what i'm doing so instead of having these these edges fold down to the center i'm going to release them on either side so that we have a kind of a t shape can you see that? 
Another way to handle it would be to go back to the early stages, fold the sides to the centre and then bring those over as we did earlier on. Okay, now, and then I'm going to release all that inside. So one of them is different from the other. This is, in fact, they're going to end up the same, but it helps me to, to explain how this thing is connected. So what we've got is two units which are on the face of it identical, although one has been slightly changed. Now here we've got two short tabs here. So these two sections here, knitting needle pointed to the ready. This section here, which is where there are two raw edges touching one another. Those are two tabs together, which are going to fit inside this pocket here. See that? So what we're going to do, I'm going to put these in now. I'm going to put insert those two tabs into that pocket. And I'm going to press that inside so it fits all the way. And then the logical thing now is you can see that here we've got a, a hole which is the proportions of this hole are in fact two by one and the little this little section here is also two by one so we're going to slot that in to that pocket at either end and pinch them together like that shall i show that again i'll show it again i'm going to take it apart so we have these two units which are folded identically but one is slightly reorientated I'm going to pinch those two uh, ends together and I'm going to put them together into that slot in the other half. And I'm going to just press it down as far as it will go. And at the same time, network. secondly, I'm going to insert those two flaps into this hole which, into which they neatly fit. So far so good. Now you can probably guess that the, the final move is just a question of reforming these diagonals here to hold everything in place. Bit of jiggery poker but we get there in the end. So here we've got I have no idea what the geometric shape is, and if I knew I probably couldn't pronounce it. But I, I call it a double bracket, because these things look like little brackets. And it makes just a curious little shape, which I made it at first and rather sort of, was rather impressed with what I'd achieved. But when Asya saw it, she said, that's really lovely, I really, I really love that. Will you make me, will you show me how to do it? And so this was made probably a couple of years ago, and I'd rather set it aside. So um, I'm very pleased that, that we're looking at it again. I realise that it's got a, an attractive form. It's fully three-dimensional and it's absolutely incredibly simple. So that's the first thing. I'm now going to go on to fold number two. Has everybody finished? Can, can we just check maybe? So another drink of water. This is actually water. It looks like gin, but it's not. It is water, I promise you. We, we believe you, Dave. Uh, a few people want a tiny bit more time, so if okay. we can maybe give them a minute. Okay. Absolutely. Tell us what paper we need for the next class, perhaps. If you can find your A4s. I'm going to zoom out. Is zoomed out. Okay, so this is actually an A4. And I'm sorry to say it won't work with a, a, a the American letter size. It has to be A4 for this to work. Now, your, yours will probably be white. If you happen to have coloured A4, that is also really good. Now, I'm going to even confuse you. Now, this is quite difficult to get hold of. 
this is A4, which is coloured and white. And I'm actually going to use this paper to show you this next uh, um, model. I'm choosing this colour because it's easy to teach with. It's quite difficult explaining with pure white paper. But yours most likely will be white, and that is just fine. So if you can find your A4, we're going to start folding. I'm putting that aside because I'm going to use this coloured green colour and white. Now we're going to start... Dave, hey, we've got one request to repeat oh. the last move, and I know we've got a few people who haven't okay. quite finished. So if okay. you can just show that fitting together so one more time. I think, I think the last move is just where you put the 45 degrees back in, perhaps. Okay. Yeah. So, back to this. So we've got these two units. One is, is with these 45 degree pieces folded in. This one here is unfolded so it is simply the strip with the sides to the center and the sides to the center again and then unfolded. So we have two units which are on the face of it identical but in fact they're slightly reorientated. Part of this has been unfolded. So this is the one that hasn't been unfolded. This has still got these 45 degree creases in. This one has been un partially unfolded. And here you'll see that there are two uh, ends of the strip. It goes around in a curious T shape. And there are the two ends, the two raw edges, the short raw edges are actually clustered together. They're held together. And I'm gonna turn that round I'm going to insert those in between the two layers of the other unit and push them all the way. Then it's, it seems logical, and it is logical, and it's the right thing to do, to push these things inside as well. So I folded these remaining ends into the rectangular hole into which they fit perfectly. Does that make sense now? I hope so. And then I'm going to finish it off by just replacing these four 45 degree creases at either end. And we finish it with our double bracket unit. No great idea. thanks dave yeah okay. i'm sure i'm sure the repeat was helpful thank you okay so now i'm going to go back to the a4 that we found here and i'm going to start by folding it turning it with the the short edges toward towards me so i'm going to fold it in half mine is green on the other side yours will most likely be white on both sides now the great thing about a4 paper as you as i'm sure you know if you fold it in half you get a piece of paper which is or the shape that we've made is not a4 but it's a5 and the unique thing about a size paper is that if you fold in half you get a new a new rectangle which has exactly the same proportion as the original so we're going to cut that i'm going to get my folding tool and i'm going to cut it in half because we need lots of these I'm going to cut along the folded edge and I've now got two identically sheet, shaped A5 pieces of paper which have the same proportion which is one to root two as the original. Now believe it or not I'm going to do exactly the same thing with one of these. I'm going to fold that in half like this. I'm going to fold the short side over to meet the other short side and believe it or not I'm going to cut that too. So we're making two A6's. The other half of the A4 we don't need for the time being. So we, we, what we need is, in fact we only really need one of these. So I'm going to get rid of that as well. 
So we need an A6. The next thing I'm going to do is fold it in half yet again, but this time I'm taking the long raw edge up to meet the other long raw edge, like this, and I'm going to cut this paper again with my cutting implement to make two half um, A6s. So far so good. Actually we've done far more cutting than we have folding with this model. Now to make it a bit easier for me, I'm going to exchange this green one for an orange one which I prepared earlier because it's easier for me to show you how the, the things go together. Yours of course will more, more than likely will be white on either, on either side. Now then, are we ready to go ahead? I hope we are. So we've got two half A6s. Now I'm going to put this one, I'm going to turn it over so that you can see where the colour is. Here I've got orange on this side. Yours, of course, will be white and it won't matter. I'm going to reorientate this like this. So this is, if you like, portrait format. This is landscape format. And I'm going to place one on top of the other. And I'm, I'm going to place it exactly on top of the other. So that these two right angle corners at the very top exactly coincide. You somehow you have to hold them together. They tend to stray apart, but don't let them. Show this paper who is the boss. And having done that, I'm going to take the, the one that's behind and fold it over the top. And I'm going to turn over just to check that everything is still lying where it should be. In other words, all these edges are folding back on each other. And that this right angle corner is square and neat and tidy. And having done that, I've got one short section here and one long section here. And I'm going to take this long section and I'm going to fold it over so that we've got a kind of a V shape. Once again, I'm going to turn over before I put the crease in firmly to make sure everything is lying neatly. So we've got two, in my case, there are two different colors because it makes it easier for me to teach. So here I've got a short rectangle which I'm actually going to fold in half and I'm going to fold this raw edge down to touch the edge of the other section. I'm going to make a crease there. And guess what? I'm going to do exactly the same on this side and fold this down to meet the other. So we've now got a V shape which has, in fact, very short arms here. I hope that's clear. And if you'd like me to repeat it, I can do. I'll repeat it again. So let's start again, just to make sure that you're right. So to begin with, I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to put it exactly over the other in this lands landscape portrait arrangement. So this is portrait, this is landscape. So the one that is behind, I'm going to fold over the front and I'm going to turn over and I'm going to bring this longer strip from behind and fold it over. Next, I'm going to fold this short edge to meet that vertical. Then I'm going to turn over and I'm going to re repeat the process on the other side. So I hope that's okay. Lee, would you like to check that everybody's understood, please? Let's have a look. Yeah. 
Have a drink of gin. Oh, sorry, water. I'm ready to go to the next step. So We've got a small number of people who didn't follow it, Dave. Okay, once more. Three, three people, but yeah, let's try once more if we've got once time. Once more. Okay, so here we've got our two strips. Imagine that those creases aren't there. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take this one on the right and I'm going to put it on top of the other so that the top left hand corner exactly matches the one below it. So this one is landscape, this is portrait. This is pointing towards me here and I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to fold it over like that. Then I'm going to lift it off the table, turn it over. I'm going to make this section here, which is longer than the other one, fold that over the central section. Got a short corner here, short edge here, which I'm going to fold up to this line. And then if I turn over, this meets the other. Hope that's now clear. I'm going to move on a bit. Okay, so I'm now going to separate these two and unfold them and I just want to check that everybody's looks more or less the same. So if you look at these two strips here we've got, where's my pointer? I've lost my pointer. Oh there it is, there's my pointer, my knitting needle. Right so this, this top section here is a square. It must be because we started by putting one section over the other. And here I've got another square here. Then we've got another rectangular section here and here. And then there's another little short rectangular section at the bottom. So if we turn over the other way, in my case, it's, it, you can see the two different sides. And we've got two mountain folds on, visible on each strip. Here's a mountain fold, here's a mountain fold mountain mountain fold mountain fold here is a square here is a square so arrange it so the two squares are at the top and the two mountain folds are poking up towards you and the next step is to pick up the two mountain folds with your thumb and forefinger and bring them towards each other and lie one on top of the other exactly and put a new crease, which in fact is halfway between the two previous mountain folds. So we've added a new valley crease halfway between these two mountain folds. I'm going to repeat the process on the other if you didn't quite get it. I'm just going to lift these up a tiny bit. And I'm going to bring those together and make one line on top of the other. I'm going to crease that down flat. So now we've got two identically shaped pieces of paper. And they've got mountain, valley, mountain, a square at the top, and a funny little short rectangle at the bottom. So far, so good. Right, so I'm going to move on and just look at this one on the left. And I hear it, this, we must make sure that the orientation of the paper is correct. So this must be a mountain, also a mountain with a valley in the middle. Not that way up, we want the two mountains facing us this way. Now what I'm going to do with, and I'll show you where I'm going with my brand new pointer, which keeps rolling off the table. I'm going to make a new mountain fold which goes from the upper left corner of this rectangle here and it traces down to touch the bottom right hand corner over here. I'm going to pick the paper off the table and I'm going to start just bending it apart so that, I, so that either end of the new mountain fold that I'm going to put in is visible. 
and I'm going to start squeezing it just softly to begin with, checking that the crease that I'm putting in is going to end at that corner there. So we're making a mountain fold from there to there, softly to begin with. And we, keep, we can roll it round. If, if you have both ends of the intended crease in, in sight, then it's easy to put the crease in. I should point out that this is not bisecting that angle. It's a crease which runs from this corner to that one, so it cannot be 45 degrees. What angle it is, I've absolutely no idea, but it's certainly not 45 degrees. So when I'm happy that that crease is running from corner to corner, I'm going to squeeze it in. And I'm going to make it sharp. Okay, then I'm going to undo it, and I'm going to make another diagonal of this rectangular area. So the crease will start from, in this time, the bottom left, and it will run towards the right at about half past one, to that corner there. And the same principle applies. I'm just going to start by bending this rectangular area in half. Just rolling the paper around, making sure I can see both ends of the crease or where the crease is going to run, both of the reference points which are the beginning and end of the crease. And I'm going to squeeze it in, just correcting as I go to make sure that the diagonal runs correctly. Not a 45 degree diagonal, it's a diagonal of this rectangle. Okay, so you can see that we've formed a sort of water bomb base. And you see it's already trying to collapse. So having done it on one uh, of the pieces, I'm going to repeat the process on the other. After I've just had another drink of water. Okay, so let's look at this one. Here is our square at the bottom, in this case. Here's the short rectangle at the top. And here is our rectangular area, which has a valley fold in the middle. Make sure you've got mountain here, mountain here, valley in the middle. And I'm going to trace a new mountain fold, which goes from the top left to the bottom right of this rectangular section. So I'm lifting the paper off the table, I'm rolling it round softly to begin with, having in view both ends of the new diagonal that I'm creasing. I'm turning the paper around so I can make sure I see. Sometimes it's not easy to, to see exactly where the crease line ends. And when I'm happy that the crease is going in the right direction, I'm squeezing it flat. Opening up, and I'm going to do the other diagonal in the same form, on the same method. Opposite ends of the diagonal in view, rolling the paper around until it's running correctly to opposite ends. And I'm going to press it flat precisely. And once again, we've now got two identical pieces of paper which are no longer flat on the table because we've put these uh, these sort of uh, water bomb based type creases uh, into the paper. Okay, so how are we getting on? Was it worth checking, Lee? Should we have a look? Mm -hmm. Just while we're checking, we had a question about where people who, who have missed learning the chain link cubes, where they might uh, where they might be able to do that. Uh, well, think, diagrams or anything, is I there? I haven't got diagrams yet, but they are in course of production. But it, it is so ridiculously simple that I, I think you probably can fit it out, uh, figure it out for yourself. If you have a look at my, uh, my website, which is www.brilliantorigami.com, check the news section or the blog section, you'll find that there is a posting about it. 
and some of the variations uh, which, which sprung from it. If you have time at the end, I'll show you some of those variations and I'll show you briefly how the chain link cube, which we're clearly not going to have time to do today, uh, I can show you uh, some of the variations if we have time. Okay, well, we, we're, we've maybe got just under 15 minutes left before the last class, so, so I don't think we're going to have time today. We're not going to have time. People are, people are nearly there. We've, uh, okay. Everybody pretty much is there. So okay. can... I'm going to move on. So let's look at our two squares, or our, not squares at all, are they? They're rectangles. So what I'm going to do now is, at the moment, I have both of these sections here, we have these two diagonals, which are mountain folds. I'm going to turn one over so that the rectangular section is marked by valley folds instead and I'm going to turn this through uh, 90 degrees so that the two square areas this is a square area here and so is this one and I'm going to put this one on top of that one see that so this is valley fold this is mountain fold you can see the mountain folds here this has got the valley folds on this side I'm going to put the mountain fold unit onto the other. We now have this shape. So if I lift up the paper off the table, I'm going to bring this other section around, now forming this water bomb base shape, and I'm going to tuck this over the other end. Now you'll see on this side that the water bomb base shape Oh, sorry, has formed itself into a very crisp looking pyramid. And you can probably guess that we repeat the process with the other side. We bring this round. Now we can tuck it simply underneath this section here, this, this short rectangle area, tuck it underneath the other corner and we can form the other um, pyramid shape on the other side. So that really is the model complete and it forms a sort of a, a double pyramid which works pretty well as a Christmas decoration particularly if you've got two coloured paper but even if even if you've got white paper it still looks pretty nice there's a refinement that you can make if you have a on in this case you can see there's a, a raw edge here now you can in fact hide that away by putting that raw edge between these layers here i'm just going to using my patented la force pointer i'm going to hook that a little bit fiddly but you can put that inside which means that the raw edge is hidden and it's just a little bit tidier. Also, you can see here on this side, there's another raw edge. And I'm, once again, I can just make it slightly tidier by putting that in between the layers on this side. It's a bit fiddly, but it can be done. So it's, it, this is a form that I like very, very much because it, it uses this this wonderful proportion of the A4 or the um, if you make the diagonals of an A4 I'm just demonstrating this you don't have to do it it only works with an A4 which is why unfortunately other paper formats don't work if we put the two diagonals of the A4 in like this rather badly folded on this side And then we put in the the horizontal valley fold. We're making a sort of water bomb, a water bomb base. If you then collapse it as you would a water bomb, magically this thing lies flat on the table. And the other incredible thing is that the the, the points of the water bomb that we've kind of formed form a square, which is effectively what we've done with this. 
we've made a sort of three-dimensional water bomb which makes a pyramid and they form they, they you can interlock them as we've done with this shape here any questions has anybody managed that or anybody not managed that a lot of people have managed it and uh, say it's superb and beautiful and nice and uh, a really nice unit. Excellent. So the great thing is if you're into Christmas decorations, making uh, Christmas tree decorations, and you've got only a few sheets of A4, you can make lots because that is one A6. So, so from one A4, you can make four of those. If you think about it, we, we divided the A4 into, into uh, four pieces, divided those into two. So with one A4, you can make four of those. So it is quite a nice shape and it's quite easy to, to put in, into one of these corners a, a cord which you can use to attach to your Christmas tree. I have to say I'm not into making Christmas decorations because people, people who don't know about origami say, when you show them some very complicated construction that you spent weeks making, they say, oh, Dave, that, that would look lovely on my Christmas tree. Can you make lots more for me, please? And it's not a, it's not a reaction that I uh, encourage. Absolutely. Does anybody else need any more clarification? I don't think so. Everyone, I think, got it. Uh, Will there be a diagram, which is the other question that people have asked, <laughs> about, can you make uh, me a... Well, I think I've got one somewhere, but it's rather poor. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I I'll just briefly show you um, the, the principle of the chain link queue, which is this thing, which is, as you can see, has is a strong relation of this um, double bracket. It may not look similar, but it is. Now, this is incredibly simple. I discovered it at the beginning of lockdown when I was sort of keeping my hands busy. Everybody was very anxious at the in the early days of lockdown. And I was uh, distracting my anxiety by folding bits of paper. So this is how it goes together. It is incredibly simple. So what you need is two um, two by one rectangles. If you've got different colors, it's extra showy. I'm not going to teach you, but I'll show you the principle. So if these are two by one rectangles, so it's half a square. So if you take a square and cut it into two, you can do it. You take the two sides to the center. This was this was the product of a previous teaching session, and that's why it's got all these uh, marks on it. So this is the center of each side. You need to mark the center of each side without creasing in the central square here. So you fold the two sides to the center. Then you fold the short sides to the center in each case, as we did with, with this thing. So short sides to the center. And once again, we do the same thing again, short sides to the center. Okay, uh, same thing over here. So we have, in exactly the same way as that, we have got a square packet. Then you release everything in the same way as we did with the double bracket. And you make us this sort of rather widescreen television shape. Now then, if you look at these two shapes, which are identical, although they're of course different colors, and point them towards each other and rotate one through 90 degrees, you can see that with this one, there is a hole which is twice as deep as it is wide. So with this shape here is a two by one. Thank you, Asha, she just zoomed in for me. So this shape here is two by one. Now this, this shape here is also a two by one. And what do we do? We can find, we can fit both of these two by one tabs at either side into this hole to make the cube. Now I was thrilled to bits with that. The other benefit is because we folded the sides of the two by one rectangle into the center, here you can see, let me get a bit closer, it's a bit difficult to see, but there is the raw edge of the paper. 
and this orange one is held in position by the raw edges here and it's got a sort of natural tension and it makes a most unusual uh, cube shape. Now there's a lot of things you can do with that. This is, I should say this is absolutely possible with a, um, a four by one rectangle if you want to but the difference will be that you won't have this split in the center. Okay, but you can, if you can make a string of these things. You can connect all of these units, our four by one rectangles, and you can collect them, connect them into a sort of a chain like this. It's not four by one. It's not dog units. It's just two. It's a strip. Yeah. And you can carry on making ad infinitum, making all these shapes. But more than that you can also build a sort of make a sort of lego system with lots of them so you can connect lots of these chain link cubes together so here is a chain link cube much the same as that with the same colors for each unit now if you take the same unit um, if you take the same unit which we did before and instead of having these two flaps pointing outwards make these valley folds you've got a connector so this thing here can fit into this hole and you can use it to connect to some rather useless construction to build sort of rather useless things but it's quite fun to make together and there's uh, there's another little development which I played with which was I thought okay so I made a, a chain link cube out of two pieces is it possible to make it from a single sheet and the answer is yes it is so this looks like a chain link cube but it is in fact from a single sheet so this is also from a 4 by one rectangle if I unfold it you can see how it works so that's a single sheet with the central part folded in half and those folded in and you can see here we've got we've got a, a shiny gold and a dull gold shape it's a simple matter then just to complete something which resembles a um, a chain link cube but it isn't in fact so that's the chain link cube story and a few uh, two-piece units for you to play with